Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Dan Trusinski, president of Platypus Advertising and Design. And I'm Nancy Christopher, PR director at Platypus. By bike or by boat it is the best pub crawl in town. The Milwaukee Pedal and Paddle Tavern, say that t- easily, right? Oh, yeah. The Milwaukee Pedal and Paddle Tavern has become the number one tour in town in just a few short years. And here to talk about its unique concept is one of its owners, Derek Collins. Welcome to Brandstorm. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, this is my first what a podcast. fun job <laughs> <laughs> that you have. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we meet a lot of super fun people on board. Everyone from CEOs to 21-year-olds, um, everyone seems to have a good time on board. So let's tell everybody basically what the Milwaukee Pedal and Paddle Tavern is. Yeah, absolutely. So we say bike and boat because pedal and paddle sounds a little confusing. Especially <laughs> and when, hard to say es- for some people. Especially on the phone, too, right. when you're trying to explain it. So we started the Bike Pedal Tavern back in 2010. And it was myself and my business partner, Ryan Lloyd. And we saw these in Minneapolis. And Ryan actually approached me. He's like, hey, they have these giant bicycle bars up in Minneapolis. We should do one in Milwaukee. I'm like, well, that sounds ridiculous. He's like, yeah, (laughs) it is. But it's super fun. And people pay to do it. I was like, what? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, so we we launched that in 2010. At first, I mean, I I basically drove every Pedal Tavern tour. So I got to meet a lot of the customers and have a really good time with them. And since then, we've just sort of been investing back into the company. And we've been able to purchase more Pedal Taverns, the bikes. And then more recently, we were able to purchase the Paddle Tavern, the boat version, so basically, it's a 16-passenger vehicle. The ones on the road, we have a operator on board, and then it's a BYOB situation, so you can bring your own canned products, so beers, White Claws. Everyone loves White Claw these days. Okay. Um, and then it's a two-hour tour, then we stop around two to three bars within that time frame. And it's in Walker's Point in the Third Ward in Milwaukee. And then the boat version, it's the same, similar concept where it's a BYOB situation. We have a captain and a first mate on board. And we launch our tours from the harp for the boat version. Right. And then you go down the Milwaukee River and you get to see all the skyline, all the architecture that Milwaukee has. Do they kind of give you a tour of what everything is and describe the architecture? Or Some captains are a little more vocal than others, but it's pretty much whatever the groups want. Most groups, what they do is they hop on board, they play their music, and they have fun with, with themselves. You know, they just, they just talk amongst themselves. So my understanding, too, is the four pubs that you go to when you're on the Pedal Tavern, Mm -hmm. you can choose which pubs you want to go to? Yes. So we have about 20 bars and restaurants that we work with between Walker's Point and Third Ward. And I mean, they're pretty much the same neighborhood. They're just connected by a river. So it's very easy for us to get to both of them. And we have little deals set up at all the places. You know, it might be like a dollar off a beer or something, but it's just a little incentive for bar owners to bring groups into their spots. And the group seemed to enjoy it as well. So your captains are actually steering the boat, but are the the passengers are providing the the power? Everybody has to pedal. Correct. Can you so, cheat? So yes, <laughs> so you can. So there's there's a way to cheat. So okay, I'll go for the boat version first. Okay. So the boat version, you can pedal the giant paddle wheel on the back of the boat, and that moves it forward. But the captain has a motor on board, so the captain can obviously you know, turn the motor in reverse to slow it down or go in reverse. But usually what I find happens with the boat version is that people will pedal for the first 15, 20 minutes <laughs> and then realize and <laughs> that there's a motor on board and then yeah. they never have to pedal again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've seen. Okay. As far as the bike version on the road, there is no motor, so you have to pedal. Okay. So the way to cheat on that one is that there's actually a seat above the rear wheel well. It looks like a pedaling seat, but it's not. So you sit there, then everyone else pedals around it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what about stopping? You're in a busy city, and you come to a stoplight or what happens? Everybody stop or what? (laughs) So we do have trained professionals that drive the pedal taverns. Okay. Uh, Actually, we have have an, an amazing staff for both the bikes and the boats. And they have a brake that overrides all the pedals. Okay. Just the, the, the concept of everybody providing the power just is amazing to me. That's yeah. <laughs> and, I'd be the one cheating. And the thing about that is that what we find when people say, oh, it's difficult to pedal, it's because everyone stops pedaling and you're the only one pedaling. So <laughs> as long as everyone's sort of pedaling at a consistent pace, pace. it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Okay. So 
you, you, you talked about Minneapolis. So how, give me the gist of where do you find one of these bikes? Do you have to engineer it? Do you have to make it? Did you, how did you get started? So what, what I mentioned earlier is, you know, Ryan saw these up, up right. in Minneapolis. He actually lives up there. Um, he was working for a cable company, and then I was working for a um, transportation service company here in Wisconsin. And what we found was that they were successful up in Minneapolis, and the distributor for North America, he actually lived up in Minneapolis, and he was looking to expand and sell more of these vehicles across the country. So we were the second city to get one. Third city was Houston, and then since, you know, they're now in about 45 cities, I believe, wow. throughout the country, and I've done them in about five, maybe six other cities, and Milwaukee's the best. I mean, <laughs> it, well, has, of course. it has the best nightlife, it has the best bars, and it has the best staff, I think, right. but maybe I'm a little biased. Right. Do other <laughs> cities pedal and paddle, or are you the only ones that do that? There's one other city that does it. It's in uh, Seattle. Okay. Uh, there's a, a lady up there who has both the bikes and the boat versions. And then I, I've had a chance to meet some of the other boat owners for the Paddle Tavern um, across the country. And there's groups for people like us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we found is that a lot of the boat operators, like, they're big into boats. Like, boats have been their their main thing, so they have a boat background. And that's how they got into the, the boat version of it. You had mentioned that Milwaukee is the best city. How different are the cities in terms of personality and what works well? One thing that I really enjoy about Milwaukee is the Milwaukee River. And there's not a lot of rivers like that across the country where they ha there's so many bar stops on the river. If you just look at Chicago, you know, our neighbor to the south, Chicago has a great river and there's great architecture on the river, but you can't really stop anywhere if you're on a boat because the walls are probably about, you know, 15, 20 feet high. Right. Right? Uh, whereas the Milwaukee River... The water's so high right now that it's almost coming over right. the walls. <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. Um, but there's so many bars on the river that it's, it makes it really unique and really fun. So a couple years after you were here in Milwaukee, you ran into some controversy. You had your liquor license pulled. Mm -hmm. How did that impact your business? Yes. So when we started, we sort of had a operated in a gray area where we were considered a green limousine where you know people could drink their own beverages on board. Then the city attorney looked into it a little bit deeper because we were applying for our fifth license. And the city attorney is like, well, technically, because there is no motor, you're not a limousine. So it's breaking a state law. So what happened was the city said, all right, well, you're breaking a state law. We can't have beer on board. It's over. And this happened October 5th. Oh, my God. 2012. <laughs> so that's only what a year and a half into your business. Yeah, it was our. Yeah. Well, no, it was Two our years. third oh, season. Oh wow. Yeah, that it happened towards the end of it. We were booming. We were having a really fun time. All the customers were having a great time, and then it happened. And then the next day, the Journal Sentinel put out a giant article. It said "tapped out" front page and a giant picture of wow. a pedal tavern. Nice. <laughs> and it was awful. Yeah, everyone. You know, wanted to cancel their tour because they're like, well, what's the point of being on a pedal tavern if you can't drink on it? I mean, it's a very valid point. <laughs> right. Um, although it's still now it's just exercise. But you can yeah. still go from pub to pub. Yeah, you can still go from pub to pub. And you know what? I've done it without alcohol, and it's still a great time because you can, you know, if you want shots, you can still buy them at the bars and stuff. Sure. But people want to drink, so we listened to the people. We went to this uh, to the state to Madison and. We were actually able to work with a representative up there, Jeff Stone, and he wrote a bill for us, and then the bill passed and passed in 2013. And then January 1st, 2014 was the first legal year that we could drink on pedal taverns. So year over year, how much business did you lose in that time? Oh, my gosh. 2013 was so bad. We, we lost half of our customers and then at the same time, what we were doing to compensate for not being able to drink on board is that we were handing out drink tokens that we would then buy back from the bars. And so our level of ridership went down by a half, and then our cost for buying the drinks went up significantly. Sure. So your margins were Our margins horrible. were minimal. If we didn't have this pass, there's no way that we would even be in operation. Now you said uh, BYOB, so uh, they have to buy their own beverages. Correct. And bring them on board. So you're not selling any of the alcohol. Yeah, and then when we originally started, there wasn't really a blueprint to right. our plan at all. How to all. monetize this, yeah. right. 
And so what we found out is that when people first started to come, you know, before it was legal to drink, people would bring like bottles of Jameson and some, you know, some crazy stuff and, <laughs> and people would get a little crazy. So now yeah. we figured out, all right, it's only three cans per person. Okay. You know, that's, that's enough to get you through two hours. It's still sure. a super fun time. And, you know, people aren't going to get a little too crazy. And no hard on... liquor, right? Correct. No hard okay. liquor. So it's beer. So yeah. is there a cooler on board? Most people bring their own oh, coolers, coolers. Okay. but we do have coolers nice available okay. if people want to use it. Awesome. Did the controversy hurt or help you? So it definitely hurt us, but at the same time, it spread awareness of our business. And when it finally became you know, officially legal to drink on Pedal Taverns, the Journal Sentinel actually put it on the front page that it was legal again. We're like, well, thank you for doing that. Right. Since you almost killed our business. <laughs> and the response was phenomenal. People were calling right away, booking everything online, and just, you know, the, the sales went up significantly in 2014. Yeah, and I think people cheer for that underdog kind of thing. I mean, if you did it and you had a good time, exactly. and, and then it's taken away from you, I mean, it's just... Kind of like the whole prohibition yeah. in America, too. It's like, you know, okay. I think it, it actually helped when you couldn't have it for a little while. Correct. I mean, I would say 98.8% of the people I talked to were in favor of it. Sure. It, it, I mean, when the bill passed, it was Democrats and Republicans. So right. So it brought people together. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Few things do that. Right, right. <laughs> Put beer on a pedal tavern yeah. does. Right, right. Pedal taverns and, and Green Bay Packers. Right. right. There you go. Right, right, right. You know, I remember you saying... Derek and I were once on a plane together talking okay. about the pedal tavern. And you told me on the plane that you don't do any regular advertising. You didn't have to. When we first started, we did one Groupon. And this, I mean, this is back when Groupon was super new and super popular. And since that, a lot of social media posts, Facebook, sure, um, Instagram. You know, Instagram is recent in the past couple of years. But we didn't do the traditional like paper advertising, television, right. newspaper, no radio. Now we've sort of gotten into some radio ads just because of the way that the system works now. You know, you could sell your tours with the radio auctions and then they give you credits for sure. radio ads. Sure. Um, but what we've found is that the, the best advertising out there is word of mouth. Being on the street, sure, and then just having think, that visibility I would think on the like street. User, uh, yeah. Instagram with user-generated content on your social feeds. Just one person sees it and says, "I want to do that too." Exactly, and having a really good like hashtag and yep. and having people like aware and having it being like a pretty cool and hip thing. Besides the social media, do you do any other things to drive customers to you? Yes. So this year with Pedal Tavern, we we did do some Yelp ads as well as some uh, some Google AdWords. And we have also done Google AdWords for our boat rental business called Duffy Boats, which is um, a electric boat rental that we have, and also for our, our kayak business, too. So you also bought a building over the river, and you now have a bar as well with a patio, food truck. Tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So it, the building, we call it the Cooperage. It's 820 South Water Street, and it's home to Boone and Crockett, the bar, Takamoto, the food truck, um, and also the Cooperage event space, which hosts weddings and musicians and um, other events there. And it's also the home for Milwaukee Pedal Tavern, the bikes. And it's also home to Milwaukee Duffy Boats, which is our electric boat rental business that we have. We've also launched Brew City Kayak, which is our kayak company. So, I used to dance swing at that building on Tuesday nights. Yes. <laughs> I learned how to swing. I kind of missed that, but yeah, so, the Cooperage is really fun. <laughs> so the building, it, was, it used, to, used to be called Hot Water Warehouse, and it was run by a, a guy named Paul, and he was a really, really nice guy, and he would have dance classes on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And I believe that those were the only two days that he was in operation. And every once in a while, he would have a wedding on a Friday, but the building was very underutilized. And we got extremely lucky. We were able to purchase the building March 1st, 2018. And we partnered with uh, John Revorge from Boone and Crockett and then Mitch Sheehan from Takamoto. And Basically, the three of us were able to build it up and get a lot of people in there. And people seem to enjoy being by the water. And, and John has some amazing cocktails at Boone and Crockett. And Mitch has the best tacos in Wisconsin, according they to They are that. delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have a lot of destination marketing organizations that listen to the podcast. If a city would 
want to embrace this? How do they foster an entrepreneur like yourself or someone in their own city to do something like this? What, what can they do to help make something like this happen in their town? Yes. So the steps that would help would be the city approval. Each municipality and each state is different. They have different rules and laws. And what we found, you know, when, when I, I told you earlier off script was that we had one in California, but you weren't able to drink on that one. And that, that, one, that one we eventually sold. So basically, drinking on it is a key thing, and having streets that you can drive on it. These are not legal in Chicago because Chicago is so congested sure. that the city said no. It has to fit a couple of criteria as far as you know, being the right streets, being the right uh, crowd, and having a really good participation from the uh, surrounding neighborhood and the surrounding bars. So what's, what kind of startup investment does it take to get one of these things going? So the vehicles, you know, they sell for about $45,000. Um, and then there's probably another... Boat or bike or uh, both? The bike. The bike. The boats are about $120,000. Wow. Brand oh. new. Big uh, investment. Big investments. And obviously, you know, there's marketing behind it. Sure. And, you know, just other costs that are involved with it. So I would say another $20,000 per business to get started. But You're such a young guy. How did you do that? <laughs> we, we kept in, uh, investing back into the business. So in 2010, you know, I was driving every tour and all the money that, that we were bringing in, we just put it back and we bought a second vehicle. And then once you have a second vehicle, then it sort of takes off and then you have, you know, additional revenue that you can put back and keep buying more and more vehicles. So even with the pedal taverns in the building, you know, we kept investing and buying sure. more things so sure. buying, Compounds, buying boats right? yeah. buying kayaks buying the duffy boats buying the building so we're we're, we're not done yet we're still right. we're still reinvesting into our great story you know it's a huge space that you have at that building do you have any plans for the future with it we do so to tell you about the building on the first floor there's a bar a commercial kitchen and a event space so that's about eleven thousand square feet second floor is five thousand square feet and there's a airbnb there's a personal office and then there's a art studio that studio that we rent out and then artists use that on the third floor it's completely vacant right now it's five thousand square feet and we just got plans back uh, to have a co-working share space up there and so we're in the process right now of of having that being built and just kind of going over the, the steps in it and seeing if it would be a good fit for us there are other ideas up there of possibly having more airbnb units there's also the ability to have some tiny houses built in our south yard. I mean, there's there's endless opportunities up there. Yeah, it's a great spot right there at the mouth of the river when yeah, you come yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. So. And then most recently this past weekend we had an actual like concert outdoor festival there called Flannel Fest and <laughs> it attracted about 5,000 people. It's a main How did I not know about that? <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a lot of flannel. <laughs> Well, He's that, a hunter. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I mean, Outdoor man. Yeah, and the, I mean, the, well, the, the advertising that we used for that, it was a lot of social media, and we got all the bands to advertise on their Instagram accounts, and then we used uh, some Shepherd Express stuff. And who did you target for Flannel Fest? People who wear flannel. <laughs> There's a, a behavioral thing for that? <laughs> no, we, so. <laughs> if you're targeting. <laughs> right. the, so Flat flannel shirt. Yeah. The bands that we had on board, they they do attract people, so it was more like a music sure. festival versus anything. And did you have a contest for the best flannel? We did not. Next year we should. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't even think about that. Right. But but we did have food trucks there. We had a flannel fest official tattoo that we were given out that people signed up for. So we probably had about twenty people get a tattoo of flannel fest either on their arm or somewhere on their chest. <laughs> you know, it sounds like so much fun. What's what's the hardest part of your job? So. Every day there's challenges that are involved. It's just, it's just getting over those hurdles. For example, for Pedal Tavern, our, our biggest problem that we had was, you know, when they took the alcohol off, then we, sure. had to, we, had, we had to solve that hurdle and get over it. But more recently, I mean, for the boats, it's finding proper dock space, making sure that we're fully staffed. Captains are hard to find. They're not like every other person like they have to go through a lot of training before we're able to bring them on board and they have to pass certain classes as far as uh, the pedal tavern for the bikes i mean saturdays are the busiest days so we need the most staff on saturdays but then we can't provide additional hours for those guys throughout the week, week so it's right. just like so a, it's a part-time job it's, it's a complete part-time job so 
I mean, our staff is absolutely amazing, and our our GM who runs Pedal Tavern, her name is Renee Navis. She's amazing too. And what we found is that we have everyone from school teachers to uh, people you know who have like that nine to five Monday to Friday job and are looking for something fun and a way to make some additional uh, income as well. Sure. And then obviously all the businesses working out the the kinks and details and making sure all the businesses work well together. Do the captains accept tips? They do. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So the tip your captain. <laughs> the captains do. The drivers do. Okay. Uh, bartenders do. Everyone accepts tips. Awesome. <laughs> With biking and boating, I'm sure you're not open all year round. What is your season? So the season for the bikes, it's basically St. Patty's Day through Halloween. So March through end of October. And then for the boats, it's usually May or yeah, May first through the mid October. And then for kayaks it's Memorial Day through Labor Day. Cooperage we're open year round. So. I was say, what do you do with your winter? <laughs> now you have a building, now you have other stuff to yeah. do during the winter. Yeah, there's always there's you don't always seem things like a guy that on. sits still very much. <laughs> no. As a seasonal business, that doesn't really impact you. You go from one thing to the other in the winter or how how does that work? So we are way more busy in the summertime. Like that's when all the businesses are operating. So we do have a little bit of flexibility in the wintertime. Uh, so I am able to get out, go to Mexico for a week or something like that. But I'm in Milwaukee like all the time, just working on stuff. And I'm literally like working like every day, whether it be me being down at the Cooperage or just me being on my computer or on my phone. So if I want to book a tour uh, or I want to book one of these boat rides, bike rides, how do I do that? And then tell us how to contact you if anybody's interested on the business side of things. Absolutely. So if you want to book a pedal tavern, it's pedaltavern.com. It's P-E-D-A-L. And then if you want to book a paddle tavern, it's paddletavern.com. Oh, wow. So it's very simple. Very good. <laughs> and then if you're looking to get a hold of me, my name is Derek Collins, and you can reach me at Twitter. It's at M-K-E Derek, and that's D-E-R-E-K. Well, thanks, Derek. Awesome. It was great having you on as a guest. What an yeah. exciting job that you have. Yeah. Th- uh, thanks, Platypus. Yeah, uh, this thanks is for great. bringing me on board. It's my first podcast, so I feel excited. Yeah. Oh, good, <laughs> good. You sound like a veteran. <laughs> and to our audience, if you have any questions for Dan and me about today's episode, please feel free to contact us on our LinkedIn pages. And if you like what you've heard today, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Trzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influence choice. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm. Brandstorm.